What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. So a couple of days ago, I released a full Python tutorial, Python for Beginners. And if you watch that, you now know Python. But the question is, what do you do with that Python? Well, that's where this video comes in. In this video, I wanna take those new Python skills that you've developed over to AWS and teach you how to automate some services over there. So if you're looking for more Python practice or you're looking at how Python integrates with AWS, what people do over there, then this video will be for you. And here's what we're gonna be building. Imagine that your boss or your team lead comes to you and says, hey, whatever your name is, we're having trouble keeping up with who's creating all of these EC2 instances or servers on our system. So here's what we need you to do. We need you to set up some automation in AWS so that when an EC2 instance or server is created, it kicks off some kind of automation that takes the information from that server, processes it, and then goes and tags the EC2 instance with the name of the person who created it. So if Bob creates an EC2 instance and didn't tell anybody about it, this automation will kick off, find that EC2 instance and tag that with owner Bob. So that if we have 50, 100 servers in our environment, we have a tag for each one, letting us know who created it, who the owner of that server is. That's what we need you to do. And that's what we're gonna do today. So if you look at this simple diagram and there are things left out for simplicity's sake, but if you look at this diagram, here's essentially what's gonna happen. Somebody's gonna create an EC2 instance or server. When that's created, a rule and event bridge is gonna fire saying, hey, a new EC2 instance has been created and triggers a Lambda function. And that Lambda function will capture data and process it and then send that owner information over to that EC2 instance and tag it with that information. So EC2 instance is created, it triggers, that action triggers a rule and event bridge that fires this Lambda that goes back and tags the instance. So that every time an instance is created, instantly we have a tag with the user that did it. That's what we're building today. So the first thing you wanna do is to create an AWS account if you don't have one. It's very easy to do, just go to AWS and create an account. And once you're in there, we have a couple of pieces that we wanna to put together. So we need to create a Lambda function. A Lambda function is just like a block of code that sits there until it's fired. So something triggers it, it fires, and it does some kind of processing in AWS. Event Bridge is a place where you can set rules based on actions that happen in AWS that trigger things based off of those actions. So if an EC2 instance is created, you can set a rule and event bridge that whenever that event happens, it triggers a Lambda or it sends a text message or it does something in S3. It's hundreds of things you can do with it. So those are the three main parts. So let's start by creating this Lambda function. So let's go in AWS up here in the search bar, just type in Lambda and open that service. Let's go to create function and let's call it tag EC2 instance. And for runtime, we want to choose Python because that's what we want to practice today. So create function. Now down here, we have our default Python code. We're going to leave that for now. But what I like to do when I create a Lambda is to go ahead and create a test for it. And it's going to be a blank test. So if you go here and configure test event, I'm going to name it my test and erase all of these keys and values and just save that, we have a blank test. And we can click test and it will show you the results here. All it does is return status code 200 and a body hello from Lambda. But the reason I'm doing that is because once you run a test, it creates a log group. So if I go to monitor and click on view CloudWatch logs, it creates this log group. So now every time it runs, we have a log of that run. And by running it that first time, we create the group providing those logs. That's the only reason I do it. So now we should have a group and the first log in there. And we'll need that log in a few minutes to write our code. All right, so we have our Lambda function. We'll leave that for now. Just go back to code and leave it. And we'll put all that together later. So we've created our Lambda function. Now we need to create an event bridge rule that's triggered when an EC2 instance is created. Now the event bridge rule, you'll see this in a minute, we're gonna use requires that we have a CloudTrail trail in place because we're gonna be using the CloudTrail API for this event. So before we create this, let's go ahead and create a trail. So I'm gonna go back to my Lambda screen and up here in the search box, just type in CloudTrail and click on that, track user activity in API usage. Now many of these events don't require you to have a trail, but the one we're gonna be using does. That's why we're doing this. And again, I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so just go over here to create a trail. We'll call it my trail. 
and you have to store the logs in an S3 bucket. So I'm gonna create a new S3 bucket. It gives me a name. I'm just gonna go with that. Um, SSE KMS encryption. I'm just gonna disable that. I don't wanna deal with that right now. And CloudWatch logs, I'm gonna enable. And I'm gonna leave that log group name. And I have to create an IAM role for that. I'll create a new one. And let's call it whatever it says here, CloudTrail role for CloudWatch logs. CloudTrail role for CloudWatch logs. And this just gives it the correct permissions. Um, it creates it for us, so this is not a big deal. And I'm just gonna add these numbers on the back of this to keep them in sync. And I think that's it. So go to next. I have a trail with that name already. Let's call it test trail. And go to next. And then we're gonna leave the event type management events. API activity, we're gonna leave it read and write. Click next and everything looks good and create trail. Okay, so we have a new trail called test trail. So back to our diagram, now we're good to create this event bridge. So up here in the search box, type in event bridge, Amazon event bridge, which is a serverless service for building event driven applications. Go to create rule or over here under buses, you can click on rules and create rule. We're gonna call this EC2 launch. Um, description, I'm gonna leave blank. Event bus, I'm gonna leave default and enabled. And for the rule type, I'll choose the rule with an event pattern. Click next. And then down here at the very bottom, we're gonna set up our event pattern. So AWS services, as for the service, we're gonna choose EC2 because we want this rule to fire when an EC2 instance is created. So EC2, and then it says event type. The type we're gonna choose here is an AWS API call via CloudTrail. This is why we had to create the trail. If you want to have a rule for every time an instance starts and stops, you don't need that trail. You can just choose this, EC2 instance state change notification, and then you can choose whenever it changes to a certain state, but we're not gonna do that. We need more information. We need user information, and so we have to go to CloudTrail for that. So choose AWS API call via CloudTrail. And then it can be any operation, but we want a specific operation called run instances. Now, where did we get run instances from? Well, let me show you real quick. If you go um, to EC2 instances, I'm gonna open this and I'm gonna launch a new instance. I'm gonna call this my instance and just choose all the defaults. I don't care about a key pair. Network doesn't matter, security group. I'll just select one and launch instance. And if I now go to CloudTrail, it'll show me everything that just happened. And it usually takes a minute or two, so I'll pause this and come back when it's done. So if we click on event history, we can see a few things. So when I created that instance, it triggered an event called run instances. That's what we're choosing over here, an event bridge, run instances. And you can see I stopped the instance here, so it says stop instances. So if I wanted this rule to be Whenever an EC2 instance is stopped, I could use that. But we're gonna use run instances. So you'll see when I type that in, it kind of sets up this event pattern over here. Sources EC2, here's the detail type. As far as the detail, event source is EC2 and the event name is whenever run instances happens. So I'm gonna keep that, choose next. Target, what's gonna be my target? Well, we want the target to be the Lambda function. Every time this rule is matched, it's going to trigger a Lambda function. So select targets to invoke when an event matches your event pattern. So let's type in Lambda. Lambda function, and then we wanna choose the function we created, which is tag EC2 instance. So choose that, click next. We don't need any tags, and everything looks good. Click create rule. Now once that's created, it should, on our Lambda function, create that trigger. So let's go back to Lambda. Click on tag EC2 instance, and we should now have a trigger. So here's our event bridge trigger. So it automatically added that for us. So if you look at our diagram, when an EC2 instance is created, we have the rule set up that should trigger this Lambda. So the next step is we need to write the code in the Lambda to go back and tag that EC2 instance with whoever created it. And to do that, we need a package in Python called Bodo3. So if you type in Bodo3, and go to the documentation, it's pretty easy to use. 
Boto3 is the AWS SDK for Python. You use it to create, configure, and manage AWS services. So let's do a quick, uh, quick start. Actually, we don't need to do this because it's going to tell us to install as if we're doing it on our own machine. But when we're in a Lambda function, we already have it. We can just import it. So I'm actually going to go to Code Examples and click on Amazon EC2 Examples and just choose one of these and explain to you here what's going on. So right here, start and stop instances. So we can get an example of how to use this or how to configure this, I guess, is the first thing we want to do. So with Boto3, you just import it. Import Boto3, so let's do that. Uh, import JSON, I'm just gonna leave that. Import Boto3. And we need to set a Boto3 client, so the EC2 client. So Boto3.client EC2. This allows us to interact with the EC2 service. So let's set that. And now that we have access to that EC2 service, let's go find that documentation. So go to Available Services, find EC2. EC2, click on that, and we'll get information here. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to create tags. We want to create tags on an EC2 instance. So let's see if they have that. These are the available methods. So let's go to uh, create tags. Here we go. So adds or overwrites only the specified tags for the specified Amazon EC2 resource or resource. So what we can do is do client, which we've already defined, Client dot create tags and resources. This is going to be our EC2 instance. This is the instance we want to create the tag on. And here's the tags we want to add to it. But before we do that, we need to get the information, the EC2 instance information. So in a Lambda function, they have this data that comes in called event. This is going to be data from the event that triggered the Lambda, basically. So let's get rid of this. And what we're going to do is just do a print event just to see what kind of information we're getting. So to update your function, just click deploy. And now let's create an EC2 instance, make sure that it fires this Lambda, and then check out what information we get from this event. So instances, launch instances, and let's just call it a test instance. We're going to keep the Amazon Linux instance type. Let's choose a T2 micro because it's free tier eligible. Key pair, we don't need one. We're not going to SSH into it. Network settings, I don't really care about the settings here. Um, I don't want to create a new security group, so I'm going to choose one. But it doesn't really matter. We just want to tag it. We don't want to do anything else with it. So after you do that, just click Launch Instance. And that should trigger the function. So remember, we have these logs, these Lambda log groups that give us logs every time a Lambda function is invoked. So we should have a new log here if everything worked properly. Yep, we have a log right here in 147. So let's click that and see what kind of information we printed out. So here's the event information. This is the event that triggered the Lambda function. We just printed it out. Let's take a look at it. So let's select all of this and then let's go to Google and type in uh, JSON format and click this one, paste it in and just format this mess of data. Let's click process. And it says it's invalid JSON, doesn't really matter. Just grab all of this. We're just going to take a look at it. We don't need it to be perfect. And let's go back to our Lambda and then just paste it down here on the bottom. And let's look at all this information. So something didn't paste properly. So let's undo that. Copy it again and paste it down here. So what information do we need? We need the instance ID that was created. And we also need the username that created it. So let's see if we can find that in this data. So under detail, let's see. Yeah, under detail, here's user identity. And then we could do the ARN and slice off the user here, but I'm just gonna do username, which is Travis.media. That's who created this. So if we were to go to IAM and look at our list of users, there should be a user called Travis.media. So let's get that information. So how do we actually access that data? Well, let's start out with a variable called user equals event. And to access data, we use these square brackets. This is JSON data. We use square brackets. So event, what do we want to access? Well, we want to access the detail section. So let's do square brackets, detail. And then from there, in this detail section, 
The next level is going to be user identity. So we need to access the user identity. So detail, user identity. And once we're in this section, so now we're in this section, user identity, we want to access the username. So let's do username. And that should give us, in this example, Travis.media. So that's going to get us our username, which we're going to save in the variable user. Now we need to get the instance ID. So if we scroll down further, down to uh, response elements, and then instance set, then there's an array of items, which is just one here. You can get the instance ID. So this is what we want, this instance ID that was created. So let's start at the top. So we have the JSON here. Inside of this detail is gonna be all of this information. So we gotta use detail. So let's create a variable instance ID equals event and then detail. So we're in the detail section, which is like almost the whole thing. You can click this curly brace and it'll show you where the other one is. Way down here at the bottom, yeah, here it is. So once you're in detail, Let's see what the next level is. So detail and response elements and then instances set. So response elements and then instances set. And then within instances set, you have an items array. So items and it's gonna be the first item. So we have to be sure to use that index, which is zero to access this first item. So items, and we want the first item, so let's use the zero. And then instance ID, we want the instance ID. Instance ID, and that's gonna give us our instance ID. And to make sure that that worked, we can test it and just print those out, but I don't wanna keep creating instances, so we're gonna run with that and just try to write all this and see if it works. So now that we have the user and the instance ID, we can go back to our Bodo3 documentation and Highlight this example that they give us. And if you want to know information on the parameters, like what's required and what's not, what the defaults are, it's all down here. Here's all the information you need. So let's go back to the Lambda and paste this in. And I'm not going to do a variable. I'm just going to call client.createTags and get rid of dry run. We're not using that. But where it says resources, we need to enter the instance ID. So we have that instance ID. And for tags, we have a key and a value. So the key, we're going to put owner. And then the value is going to be the user. So the user variable. So this is going to tag the instance with a key of owner and the value of whatever user created it. And it's going to tag this instance. And that's really all we have to do here. So after that, I'm just going to do a return statement and then just because we don't need to return anything. In fact, I think it returns, it returns none. So there's really nothing there that we need. So, so let's just take all this information that we put down here and just delete it. Let's grab that, delete it and make sure all of our indentations are right and save it. Let's deploy it and try it out. So let's go back to the instances screen and create a new instance. So launch instances. Let's do my new test. Choose the T2 micro uh, key pair. Like I said earlier, it doesn't matter any of this. Just select an existing group so you don't create a new one and click launch instance and let's see what happens. Before we even check our Lambda, let's just see if the instance gets tagged. Maybe we'll have a win on the first go. All right, so the instance is running. Now if we go over to tags, let's see if we have that information. So it looks like it didn't work. Let's refresh and select an instance and try it again. Nope, it didn't work. So what we can do is we can go back to our logs and refresh. And see what happens. So click your latest log. So here it says name error, name client is not defined on line 13. So client.createTags, this client variable is not defined. So let's go back to line 13. 
right here, client.createTags. We copied and pasted this. I already know the issue. We copied and pasted it without realizing that we didn't assign this client to a variable called client. We assigned it to one called EC2. So it needs to be EC2.createTags. And by the way, when you're in Boto3, everything's a method. So once you have this EC2 client, you can call dot whatever's on this list. So there are, um, so there are creates, there's deletes, there's describes, like a get. There's enable, there's modify, there's all kind of stuff. You just call it by doing client dot or EC2 dot whatever method you want here. So I think that'll fix it. We just had the wrong thing here. We had EC2 defined up here and we had client down here. So making these two the same should solve it. So let's deploy that and create another instance. And don't worry about costs here. They're all T2 micros and we're deleting them right away. Just make sure you don't leave it running and forget. So let's do um, my other instance and Amazon Linux, T2 micro, no key pair and select an existing security group. Launch instance, and now we should see the tags come up. All right, so my instance is now running. I'm gonna click on it, go to tags, and it's still not there. And I think I know why too. This is how it works. We try it out. If it doesn't work, we tweak it until it does work. And I think I know what the issue is. It's gonna be a permissions issue. So if we go back to our logs and go to the latest, <clears throat> yeah. Client error, an error occurred unauthorized when calling the create tags operation. You're not authorized to perform this operation. So with this Lambda function, from this Lambda function, I'm calling create tags on an EC2 instance. While I don't have permissions, this Lambda doesn't have permissions to do that on an EC2 instance. We have to grant it permissions. And we can do that easily by going to configuration and permissions. And here you see that there's an execution role. This is a role that's created when a Lambda function is created. So you create a Lambda function, it creates a default execution role. So what we need to do is we need to add permissions to this role to create tags on EC2 instances. So if we click this role, it's going to take us to that role page where we can alter its permissions. So click this role. And you'll see when a Lambda function is created, this role gets the permissions to create a log group and to create a log stream and to put log events. And we've looked at those logs during this video. So let's add something to it. So click edit policy. So we'll go to add additional permissions, choose a service. We want this to be EC2 because we're adding permissions to create tags on the EC2 service. So EC2, which actions we will go to tagging and click on this drop down and click create tags. We want to give it permission to create tags. And then resources, select resources to restrict access. We're going to choose all resources and that's it. Just go to review policy and save changes. And now we've added those permissions to this role. So up here it says allow EC2 create tags on all resources. So now if we go back and create another instance, I'm actually going to delete these three, just Click the three and terminate instance to get rid of those. Now I'm going to launch a new one called my final instance. I'm that confident and all of the same settings, no key pair and select an existing security group and launch instance. Now when this comes up, we will have tags. All right. My instance is running. Click it, go to tags and we should have the owner. The owner is Travis.media. And so the benefit here is that for your company, all servers that are created, all EC2 instances that are created are now going to have the owner tag attached to them. Great job. You've used Python to automate services in AWS. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, let me know down below in the comments what you'd like to see next. See ya.